All right, thanks for watching, and today we will prove some neat facts about continuity, such as the sum of two continuous functions is continuous, or the product of two continuous functions is continuous. And we will do this both using the epsilon delta definition of continuity and the sequential definition of continuity, just so that we can get practice with those two important techniques. And by the way, the following is one of my favorite proofs in analysis because it's just so elegant. So fact, if f and g are continuous at x naught, I can assume some real number x naught, then the sum is continuous. Then f plus g is continuous at x naught. And so let me first do the epsilon delta uh, proof. So let's whip out our epsilons. So let epsilon be given. Then what do we know? We know that f is continuous. So since f is continuous, again, at x naught, there is some delta 1. positive such that, again, for all x, we know that x minus x naught less than delta 1 implies f of x minus f of x naught. Now, usually we want to put epsilon, but since we have two terms, let's put epsilon over 2. And well, we can just play the same spiel, but for g, so since g is continuous at x0, there is delta 2 such that for all x, x minus x0 is less than delta 2 implies g of x minus g of x0 is less than epsilon over 2. All right, but now what can we do with f plus g? Well, since we want both of those things to hold, we need to choose the smaller one of delta 1 and delta 2. It's kind of, again, we want both things to be true at the same time. So now let delta to be the minimum of delta 1 and delta 2. So the smaller one of two positive numbers is still positive. Then, again, for all x, if x minus x naught is less than delta, then both things are true. Then f of x minus f of x naught is less than epsilon over 2, and g of x minus g of x naught is less than epsilon over 2. But then, well, what do we want to compare? We want to compare f plus g of x with f plus g of x naught. But all that this is, it's f of x plus g of x minus f of x naught minus g of x naught, and that's f of x minus f of x naught, like Borat says, not x naught, plus g of x minus g of x naught. And that's great because now we can use a triangle inequality, so that's less to equal to f of x minus f of x naught plus g of x minus g of x naught. But here comes the satisfying thing. Both things are less than epsilon over 2. So epsilon plus over 2 plus epsilon over 2 gives us epsilon. And therefore we're done. For all epsilon, we found a delta such that for all x, if x minus x naught is less than delta, then f plus g of x minus f plus g at x naught is less than epsilon. That's it. Um, 
And now to prove, so it's for addition, and let me also do the um, sequential definition. So here's another proof. Okay, so suppose uh, Xn is a sequence that converges to X0, then since F is continuous, we get f of xn goes to f of x0 and since g is continuous we get that g of xn goes to g of x0 but then what about f plus g of xn f plus g at xn, well by definition that is f of xn plus g of xn. But here's the thing, so f of xn, that's some sequence, let's call it sn, g of xn, that's some other sequence, tn, and what we know, we know that sn goes to f of x0, tn goes to g of x0, so by the sum law for sequences, we know that this goes, so the limit of the sum is the sum of the limits. So that f of x0 plus g of x0, by the corresponding video I've done for sequences, and that is just f plus g at x0. And therefore, in this case, we are done by the sequential definition of continuity. But again, it's slightly cheating because it assumes the corresponding fact for sequences. But still, very nice. And now, uh, we want to move on to proving that subtraction is continuous. But for this, we just need an intermediary step. So now, next fact. Let's show if f is continuous at x0, then any multiple of f, so kf, kfc is continuous at x0. Actually, it is kfc because we can just write kf is continuous <laughs> anyway. So continuous at x0, and again, it's a super neat proof. First of all, if k is 0, and by the way, k is a real number here. So in other words, every multiple of f is also continuous. Um, and um, what do I want to say? Uh, well, first of all, we can assume k is non-zero, because if k is zero, we're done, because the zero function is continuous. So assume k is non-zero. And let's prove this, so let epsilon be given. And the point is, since f is continuous, there is some delta such that, if, again, for all x, if x minus x naught is less than delta, then f of x minus f of x naught, which is less than usually epsilon, but because you're multiplying by k, you do epsilon over k, except k might be negative, so let's just put an absolute value. And here's where we need the fact that k is non-zero. And then the point is, with the same delta, delta, if x minus x naught is less than delta, then, well now let's estimate kf at x and kf at x naught. kf at x minus kf at x naught. Well, the point is the k just factors out. So it's k times 
f of x minus f of x naught, and that becomes absolute value of k times absolute value of f of x minus f of x naught. But now we know this is less than epsilon over absolute value of k, so it's k times epsilon over absolute value of k. This cancels out, and we have our satisfying epsilon. And by the way, I'm not going to do this, but the proof for sequencers is very immediate. If xn converges to x0, then f of xn converges to f of x0. So k f of xn converges to k f of x0. So, but this is equally satisfying. And by the way, just a little aside, well, what have we shown? We've shown the sum of continuous functions is continuous and the scalar multiple of continuous functions is continuous. So in fact, if you know some linear algebra, it follows that the set of continuous functions forms a vector space. So it is a very good set to consider. And as a consequence now, well, if f and g are continuous, then, well, f minus g is continuous. And why is that? Well, we know g is continuous. Therefore, minus g, which is just minus 1 times g, so with k equals minus 1, is continuous. And therefore, since f is continuous, you just add that to minus g, so f minus g, that's f plus minus g. And the point is this is continuous, this is continuous, so the whole thing is continuous. Finally, let me show something very quick, namely that if f is continuous, then the absolute value of f is continuous. And this is very quick, just with the reverse triangle inequality. So suppose, um, sorry, so let epsilon be given. Given then since f is continuous at x naught, then there is is delta positive such that if x minus x naught is less than delta, then f of x minus f of x naught is less than epsilon. But then with that same delta, delta if uh, x minus x naught is less than delta, then, well, let's consider difference between absolute value of f at x minus absolute value of f at x naught. By definition, all that this is, it's absolute value of f of x minus absolute value of f of x naught. But now difference of absolute values, so we can just apply the reverse triangle inequality. So this is f of x minus f of x naught, and this is s and epsilon. Therefore, absolute value of f is continuous as well. And next time, I will prove the product law. So in other words, if the product of continuous functions is continuous. All right, thank you very much.